Turn on security check. Okay, turning on security check. Back door unlocked. And welcome back to part two, where I'm showing you how I use computer vision in my home automation system. So in part one, I showed how I did the computer vision model training and the inference on the live camera feed. I also showed how you could output the live inference results over MQTT, which can then be picked up by other services such as InfluxDB and then using Grafana to display that data. In part two, I'm going to show you how you can use Node-RED to pick up the message from MQTT and integrate it into the home automation. Here you can see one of my Node-RED flows. I'm currently on the Sensors tab, and you can see that I'm subscribed to Zero Kitchen Sensors Top Lock, and likewise Zero Kitchen Sensors Bottom Lock. These are the two topics that I'm publishing the inference results to. If I turn on the raw MQTT debug node, we can see that it's spitting out a one, which is the inference result for the lock being locked. Now this comes through a filter node, and filter used to be report by exception node. The name's a little bit cryptic, but basically what it used to do was filter out duplicate values. We don't need to be passing through a one every single time in this instance. Once it's set to one, I'm happy. I'm only caring about when it changes to a different state. So if I go ahead and remove this debug node from here and put it on the end of that filter, redeploy, and clear my debug logs. You can see that we're not getting a one out of here anymore because it's just feeding in a one continuously. So there's no change, so it doesn't bother to send that message on to the next node. So let's get rid of that debug node. We're happy with that and that's working now. I then have a change to rules node. So basically this is just gonna change the payload of numeric value of one and replace it with a Boolean flag true. And same thing for the payload of zero, gonna set it to false. This is where the home automation integration really comes to life. So I'm doing this with this extra line at the bottom here that you can see. I'm using an IoT device from a company called Shelly. It's the Shelly 1 Gen 2, I believe. So these Shelly devices integrate really nicely into Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa and whatnot. They also provide local control. They natively support MQTT. So this lets us use them as a kind of bridge. So here what I'm doing is also publishing the state of the switch to MQTT. So when I ask Google Assistant or Alexa to change the state of the switch, the Shelly One device is also going to update the MQTT topics. I can then subscribe to that same topic and watch it for a state change. So if we have a quick look what's in this function, well first off let's give it a better name. So what's going on in this little script? We're looking at the message topic. If it comes from the top lock, we're going to set the context of this node. So this basically allows us to store a small bit of data in this node. So anything coming from the top lock is going to be stored in a variable called top and we're going to store the value of that payload. And then we're just going to exit out basically. Return null just basically stops the message propagating down our flow. And we do the same thing with the bottom lock. We're going to check if the topic is the same as that. And then we're going to set the value of the payload to this variable called bottom and again exit out. Now what we're going to check for if the topic so if a message comes into our function node from this one so this is our Shelly one device if that's sending a signal if that's coming in here and sending it to our state monitor node I'm going to retrieve the variable from my node context called top which we set up here remember and I'm going to retrieve the variable called bottom for the bottom lock state. Now I'm saying that if payload output is true, so remember this is coming from the Shelly device now. So we're looking at the payload in the Shelly device and if the output is true, so if I've asked Google to check on the security state, it's going to turn the switch on, it's going to set the payload output to true. Then I want to check if I've got a bottom and a top value for the, my locks and then I'm going to set the payload appropriately. Um, if they are both true, then they are locked. Otherwise, something's not locked, and I'll just send a message is unlocked. And then we return this message. So the string message that says whether the back door is locked or unlocked, we're going to delay it by five seconds. This is because Google Assistant, when you ask it a command, it repeats back to you that it's confirmed it, essentially. Now, I don't want to send my own command at the same time it's speaking back to me. It's just going to sound a bit janky. After that five seconds has elapsed, it's going to go and send it out to a link out node. This just makes Node-RED a little bit easier to manage, rather than having everything on a single flow. This link out node connects to my Google page. So I have a Google flow up here, and this is where I can connect to various devices around my house that are managed by the Google ecosystem. 
Here we have the link in node. So this can receive messages from other flows within our node red deployment. This then goes to a string to text to speech. There are some defaults set in this, such as the application, which is the default media receiver, the type of request that we're sending, it's a text to speech, and of course the actual text that we want the system to speak to us. And I'm using the cast v2 sender node. Double clicking, we can see that this one's connected to my office speaker. So now let's see it in action. Hey Google. Turn on security check. Okay, turning on security check. Back door unlocked. Hey Google. Turn on security check. Sure, turning security check on. Back door is locked. And there we have it. A security system using computer vision to check the state of my locks, then integrating it into Google Assistant to check the state of the locks, and then report that back. So thanks for watching. I hope that was useful to some of you. Hope it was interesting. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to drop a message in the chat below.